Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to the show today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. We have a great show. Our guest is Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. He is the State Extension Beef Veterinarian here from Kansas State University. We're going to talk about atypical interstitial pneumonia, which is a disease that's caused a lot of problems in feed yards in late day cattle. Whether you have retained ownership or you're feeding cattle, getting one of those dead slips is not good. Stay tuned, we're going to find out more about it. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life, it's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey, welcome to the show. Dr. Tarpoff, welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here. It's always fun to have Dr. A.J. Tarpoff here. He is the state extension beef veterinarian for Kansas State University, the state of Kansas. Does a lot of work here in the U.S., does work in Canada. And we're lucky to have him here on the show. Wealth of experience, knowledge, and practice, and now back here helping us with with programs at K-State and today we're going to talk about AIPs or atypical interstitial pneumonia mm -hmm. and and we've both seen a lot of these cases but can we just let's just talk a little bit about what AIP is okay so AIP is a really quick hitting syndrome that it hits hits cattle and it hits the respiratory tract so for one uh, and unfortunately we don't know the actual cause but what ends up happening is we get cellular damage. The small little cells in the inside of the lungs get some type of damage to them, and we have an over-response from, from the immune system. Now that, that over-response, it really thickens and enlarges the lung. Okay. okay. Yep. So the lung itself, they can't breathe out. The lung will not compress. So at necropsy, when we actually look at these animals, a normal lung will be light, pink, fluffy, if you put it in water, it would float. AIP is so thickened, it actually feels like muscle. It feels like liver. And whenever you actually put that in water, it would sink. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, we've just seen them. They're so over enlarged and engorged from all that intercellular debris that, that expands those lungs that, you know, when, when it's, it's absolutely amazing. We have something kind of similar in humans called ARDS, the Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Correct. But And just like AIP in cattle and ARDS in humans, we really don't know a single or, you know, there's multiple things that could cause it. It really could be a multitude of different things. And that, when we don't know what the actual cause is, that tells me this is a multifactorial issue. Okay, so um, research has shown that there's a lot of different things that it could be, but we've never been able to prove it. There's a similar similar syndrome in pasture cattle known as fog fever, right. a, a different type of AIP. Now there's a syndrome that we know exactly what the stages of the disease are. They graze lush growing forage, uh, consume large amounts of tryptophan, it gets metabolized in the rumen to 3-methyl-indole, and that 3-methyl-indole goes through the bloodstream and actually damages those cells inside the lung. That is reproducible. Feedlot AIP, unfortunately, is not. Yeah, and you know, a lot of times we tend to think it's just the feedlot guys that are worried about AIP, and I was just at a function where a cow-calf producer who's feeding cattle 
mm -hmm. at a, and wondered, you know, what, what is this AIP? I had a, a dead slip. I retained ownership. I had this dead slip. You know, it's, it's hard because this isn't usually in our lightweight cattle, is it? No, no. This is not a lightweight cattle issue. Okay, uh, this is our heavier animals. They've been on feed for roughly 90 plus 100 days. These are cattle that have been on feed. They've been stepped up. They've been in good health. They're eating well, and all of a sudden, boom. Okay, so they've been on feed for over 100 days. These are our, our bigger, more mature animals. And believe it or not, it actually affects our cattle when they're under a month away from regular shipment date. Yeah, and so I think that we'll leave it there for a break, but. You know, that's the thing is, is that folks, these are some expensive deads uh, that are happening in the feed yard because these are long day cattle. We get a, a some sort of episode enlargement of the lungs and we're gonna talk a little bit more with Dr. Tarpoff about this. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Howdy, this is Kurt Pate with the Tip of the Day. When I go to a ranch or a farm or a feed yard or something, the places I like to look is their tack rooms and their medicine rooms. If they're organized, clean, and taken care of and ready to do anything on the farm or ranch, I can tell that place is pretty organized. So I try to do the same thing with my place. I, uh, I keep my saddle room real nice and organized. I keep my medicines that don't need to be kept from freezing in a real organized, clean place that uh, nothing can get to. I have found when you keep things clean and organized, it makes it more effective and efficient on the ranch. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Do your cattle struggle with pink eye, BRD, or another disease? Contact Newport Laboratories for a customized solution. Our custom-made vaccines are produced using the specific diseases found in your area. These USDA licensed vaccines offer potential cost savings on vaccine and labor. Contact your veterinarian or Newport Laboratories the next time your cattle are in need of a custom solution. Newport Laboratories custom-made vaccine because every situation is different. Still using ineffective fly tags on your cattle? It's time to eliminate fleas, ticks, flies, lice, and parasites, and at the same time, give them a shiny coat, making them more valuable. One fly tag can cost $2.50, but you can do this all for about a nickel a head. Introducing the Cow Sprayer, designed and built in the U.S. The Cow Sprayer is portable, solar-powered, and comes with a 25 or 40-gallon tank. Eliminate parasites for about five cents a head with the Cow Sprayer. Cowsprayer.com this segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. And we're here at Kansas State University where Dr. Tarpoff serves as our state beef extension veterinarian for, for Kansas State University. He's over in the Department of Animal Science and Industry. And AIP is something that whether you feed cattle yourselves or retain ownership when you when you it, it's probably one of the most confusing syndromes from the standpoint of what causes it or how to treat it but what are some of the things that that we can tell as far as clinical signs when we see an AIP okay so clinical signs the first thing to keep in mind is this hits suddenly okay okay uh, a lot of the times we might run into an issue where we're checking pins in the early you know early in the day and sure enough, mid-afternoon, go by to, you know, somebody drives by and sees an AIP. And it happens, it, it can happen that quick. So what do you see with an AIP? Severe respiratory distress. These animals honestly cannot breathe, okay? And what you'll see is their head hanging down, they'll be open mouth breathing, they may have a wider stance, but the one thing that sets AIP apart is the belly breathing. 
because of those enlarged lungs, they're putting so much emphasis to try to breathe out that you can see their abdominal wall actually just flailing and really kind of stressing to help expel any, any air that's in there. And so, and it, and they will, it's very noticeable. You can see them from across the pen. You will see that abdomen really trying to get, get a, a big umph to ex, ex, basically just exhale. Yeah, and you'll see, that's also why they get that, they'll start to get that sway back when mm -hmm. usually they're flat back right. and uh, get that expiratory grunt. And it, it truly is a grunt. Yeah. Now that grunt and that noisy that that noise they make, uh, we have a couple other issues that can cause some noisy noisy breathers. Right. Which uh, is like laryngitis or honkers or uh, tracheal edema. Now laryngitis happens much further up the airway, and you will hear them snoring when they breathe in and out. Gotcha. And then honkers, it's whenever they breathe in that the trachea collapses. Okay, so that's when we hear that inspiratory grunt. Now, AIP is the expiratory grunt. So they make noise and they're trying to expel air, not breathe in. Gotcha. So based on where the noise occurs and during the time of breathing, mm -hmm. uh, specifically, and, and the size of the cattle and how quickly this comes on, it's, it's pretty, it can be pretty diagnostic just on the clinical signs. Absolutely it can. Now the other thing to keep in mind is AIPs are very common, they commonly occur during the hot, dry summer months. The same time that we also run into heat stress issues. Okay. And heat stress in cattle will also show open mouth breathing signs, but again, it's diagnostic because uh, heat stressed animals, they pant like a dog. Very fast moving, moving air, they're trying to cool themselves down. AIP. Again, they'll, they'll be open mouth breathing, and, and, but it's that belly breathing, that exaggerated belly breathing that really sets it apart. Gotcha. Yep. Well, it's uh, pretty interesting to, that you can tell so much from when they're breathing, or when the noise, yeah. how they're breathing, and, and uh, you didn't know there's so much science that goes into that, yep. but uh, pretty, pretty amazing. Anything as far as... Um, Rectal temperature, these normal rectal temp? Uh, they will be until uh, they succumb to any type of heat stress. Because okay. they, they have the inability to regulate their temperature through breathing and exhaling uh -huh. uh, temperature, uh, they can run into a fever later on in the disease course. But uh, early stages, that animal will not have a temperature. Gotcha. Yep. All right, folks, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of the causes of AIP and maybe some of the things we can do to try to help these animals that are suffering from it, you're watching Doc Talk. We'll be right back. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Supreme is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Suprevo from Merck Animal Health. If my calves start healthy and stay healthy, I've got a good shot at making money. That is why I trust Clostrix. It gives my calves the protection they need until their own immune systems kick in. Calf raisers trust Colostrix Colostrum Supplements. Colostrix is USDA licensed and proven effective. When your money is on the line, trust Colostrix. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. AJ Tarpoff. We're from Kansas State University, where Dr. Tarpoff serves as the state extension beef veterinarian for the entire state of Kansas and beyond. Um, you've done quite a bit of work outside the state of Kansas mm -hmm. and outside the United States, but uh, recently even. I have. On uh, a lot of different projects. So we're proud to have him here at Kansas State. We're proud of what he does, and, and thankfully take the time to be on the show mm -hmm. to discuss AIPs. And let's talk a little bit about how often this occurs. Well, it's been estimated from some survey data that upwards to 3.1% of animals that are placed into the feedlot will succumb to AIP. Wow, that's pretty high. That is extremely high. And it's disheartening because we don't understand the entire disease process, yet it's still happening pretty often. 
Yeah, that's. I mean, when I mean, you th you think that prevalence rate, and you probably think what regular respiratory disease is probably ten percent when you look right. at all cattle that enter the feed yard. So this is this is this is significant. It's significant from a respiratory disease basis. It's directly behind BRD, bovine resp uh, respiratory disease. Uh, the difference being that this is affecting our heavier, healthy animals uh, that we have a lot of money into. Okay, we have a lot of feed. Uh, we have a lot of time, and we've had a lot of growth in, in developing this animal all the way from birth, and boom, it hits them. Yep. So, so with, with a 3.1% prevalence rate, um, obviously people that feed enough cattle are going to have these show up as, as a dead slip or on their clothes out and things of that nature. Let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the risk factors or things that, that you know, although we don't know what causes it, we know some things that that are happening around the time we see these cases. No, and uh, one of the biggest ones, uh, we talked about dry, hot summer months. Yep. What happens in dry, hot summer areas with uh, every time a feed truck drives by the feed alley? Dust, yep. okay? Dust could be a, a pretty big indicator with and, and a risk factor uh, when it comes to AIP. So we can do some things to help manage and control some of the dust issues, especially down our feed alleys, okay? We can water at certain times of the day to keep those dust down. Uh, even uh, uh, certain types of gravel with uh, bigger chunks of gravel will, won't kick up as much dust whenever vehicles drive by. Gotcha, so, yeah. and, and you know, when we go back to talking about ARDS, uh, the acute respiratory distress syndrome in humans, yeah. 60 different known etiologies, smoke inhalation, dust inhalation, uh, all of them being, and not necessarily smoke like from a cigarette, but smoke from like a fire, right? Um, can be can be some of the risk factors. What are some of the others that that you see in feed yards as far as potential risk factors for AIPs? Uh, one big risk factor, I believe, is uh, feed disruption. Okay, yep. and not necessarily there was a feed disruption like the animals didn't eat, but possible uh, the mixing of the batch was done a little bit different. We changed ingredients. Uh, some of our feed additives may have been put in at, at a lower amount or a higher amount. There's something that has been changed, all the way down to the time that these animals are fed on a yeah. daily basis. So anything that can change, uh, just cause any types of changes in feed consumption, uh, may be a risk factor with leading up to AIPs. Yeah, and you'd listed some others as far as uh, infectious disease, maybe yep. BRSV. Uh, there, there has been some indications that BRSV, bovine respiratory syncytial virus uh, could be implemented in some type of, uh, you know, some of this interstitial type pneumonia. Uh, although it's not been proven, uh, some animals have had titers of BRSV. So what that truly means, unfortunately, we don't know for sure. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about risk factors and wrap up. So we're lucky to have him here. We're lucky to have him at Kansas State. Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, we'll see you after the break. Did you know long-range planning through the checkoff can help keep your business profitable? To successfully pass on cattle operations from one generation to the next, it's important to promote beef and keep farms and ranches profitable. Your beef checkoff helps do that. I'm Jeff Mingus. I'm from Southeast Arizona where we have a family cattle ranch. I've been in the cattle business my entire life. I can remember the onset of the checkoff program and when the Beef Council decided to use checkoff dollars to create additional demand for the chuck and the round. And I think that created a significant increase in the price of our product and I think the beef checkoff has been beneficial for our operation. So we moved to an area on a national backcountry byway and because of that there's a lot of tourists and they'll stop in sometimes and we've had a lot of people come out to the ranch. So we take that as a real opportunity to educate people about the beef industry. So we built this catering business when I retired a few years ago. I've used beef checkoff recipes over the um, last 20 years but when you're really producing that for the public it takes on a whole new meaning. As a young rancher there was a lot for me to learn when I came back to the ranch. I feel as if the beef checkoff gave me additional tools I needed. The beef quality assurance program has helped teach me how to handle cattle in a more effective manner, a way that's the most beneficial to the cow and the most efficient 
for the producer. And I'm really proud to be able to say that, that the beef industry is reaching out to the consumer. I have this one on my website, Gazpacho Steak Salad. It's very popular. And this is, this is one that millennials like because it's quick, it's fast, and they don't have a lot of time to prepare. And this one has been really popular with men because you ask them, Are you, do you like to grill? And of course they say yes and say, well, here's, here's just a couple of recipes. And they grab them. We feel really blessed that we have one of our sons, Ben, wanting to carry on the ranching tradition. So he'll be a fifth generation cattle rancher in my family. Still using ineffective fly tags on your cattle? It's time to eliminate fleas, ticks, flies, lice, and parasites, and at the same time, give them a shiny coat, making them more valuable. One fly tag can cost $250, but you can do this all for about a nickel a head. Introducing the Cow Sprayer, designed and built in the U.S. The Cow Sprayer is portable, solar-powered, and comes with a 25 or 40-gallon tank. Eliminate parasites for about five cents a head with the Cow Sprayer. Cowsprayer.com it's easy to spot the man who uses Synanthic. With lower volume and less waste, Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. Get more deworming with less dewormer at Synanthic.com. Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Inc. knows the importance of beef quality assurance and asks you to step up and get certified. Go to bqa.org for details. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. We're glad to have him here. We're Dr. Tarpoff serves as the State Extension Beef Veterinarian for Kansas State University, and we're talking about AIPs. Yep. And how do we treat them? Well, to be honest with you, treatment is pretty unrewarding when it comes to AIPs. And that's, that's one of the big difficult things about this syndrome is we know the prevalence is pretty high, and we don't really know what causes it. But one thing we do know is we don't have a treatment that works very well, <laughs> uh, which is difficult right. to manage. And but that's the same as humans. It, it is. You know, so uh, treatment, we don't have a good treatment. You know, it, it's been tried that they'll use some kind of uh, symptomatic treatments with some steroids, some different things to help decrease the inflammation. Uh, to be, but to be honest with you, it doesn't work. So what do we do? Well, our, number, our mainstay to help combat some of these issues is... We know that they're a little bit later in the feeding period. Yep. We know they're almost finished. That we'll salvage slaughter these animals if we can. Yep. Now, uh, if we are gonna salvage slaughter them, the biggest thing that we need to make sure is that they're, they're free of any type of uh, volatile residue or any meat withdrawal. Yep, yep, absolutely. And, and since it's not an infectious disease, they will slaughter these animals. Absolutely. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind is AIP is not caused by an infectious agent. So AIP does not get transmitted from one animal to another. This is an individual uh, basis. It's just an overstimulated immune uh, response to something. Uh, so these animals still can make a safe, wholesome food. Prevention? Well, uh, there are some different things that we can do to help prevent some of these things. We talked about the risk factors that we can, we can uh, right. try to cut down on some of the risk. Uh, there's also some, some things that we can actually feed. Uh, the ionophore called menensin or rumensin is a, is a feed ionophore that helps regulate feed intake and has had some pretty good success in decreasing the occurrence of some of our AAP rates. Yeah, and so, so when we look at, at feed additives, probably making sure that we have rumensin so that we, we have consistent intakes in our animals, kind of yeah. modulates intake, and then the MGA is another one. Correct. So uh, MGA, it helps suppress estrus in our, in our feedlot heifers. Um, and it has, been, it has been shown that almost a three to one ratio of heifers as opposed to steers get affected with AIP. Some of those studies have shown it. So uh, we had to take a big broad look at it. Okay, what's the difference with these heifers? Um, and something to think about is we feed MGA to keep the animals from going through estrus. Now, if there's some feed disruption, and the heifers actually come back into and start showing heat, it does affect their feed intake. It'll drop off and then get high and then go low again. So ensuring that we have proper MGA levels 
uh, could be a very helpful preventative when it comes to uh, dealing with AIP. Well, really appreciate you being on the show. Wealth of information. Find him on the internet. Send him email questions, things of that nature. He'll, uh, he'll do a great job of answering them. Thank you for watching Doc Talk today. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to find out more about what we do on Doc Talk, you can find us at www.doctalktv.com. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today, folks. Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. AJ Tarpoff, and we'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.